Welcome back on an epic journey, as we unravel the remarkable tale of Lu Sheng, a beacon of hope born in poverty, wielding the divine gift of strength to defy destiny and safeguard humanity from its impending reckoning. In the previous chapter, Lu Sheng unexpectedly encountered his sister and her friends at the Martial Arts Association. Surprising both parties, Lu Sheng was greeted warmly by his sister's friends, Feng Fan Fan and Chu Nuo, who were impressed by his remarkable abilities and handsome appearance. After a brief exchange, Lu Sheng graciously accepted their compliments before parting ways. Shortly after Lu Sheng left, his sister's friend Sister Yang emerged from the assessment building, prompting Lu Qing to inquire about her assessment results. Yang Yuan, admired for her exceptional abilities, revealed that the assessment had been suspended due to an unforeseen circumstance involving a remarkable individual named Lu Sheng, leaving Lu Qing and his friends in disbelief. Meanwhile, while heading home, he overheard a group of people discussing the commotion caused by the Hongchan Martial Arts School searching for someone door to door. Unbeknownst to him, they were actually searching for him to recruit him for their school. Lu Sheng reflects on the profound changes in his life since realizing the potential to alter destiny. Within just a week, he has transformed from a fourth level martial artist to a powerful figure living beyond 80 years with sixth level strength. This transformation has influenced his educational choices, career path, and ultimate aspirations. However, he acknowledges that his current strength is insufficient to truly impact the course of human history. Determined to reach the pinnacle of martial arts, Lu Sheng recognizes the daunting challenges ahead on his quest to become an 11th level powerhouse and shape the future of the world. Alright folks, let's set our sights high today, our goal is 700 likes. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. In the Baihe City Martial Artists Association, President Xiao Zhuhe, a sixth-level peak martial artist, appears remarkably youthful despite nearing his 60th year. Engrossed in writing characters of God, he focuses intently, aiming to fulfill a master's spiritual cultivation requirement. Advised by an old master that writing 100,000 God characters could elevate him to mastery, Xiao Zhuhe diligently pens his 46,722nd character, steadily progressing towards his goal. President receives a call from government official of Baihe City, President Xiao Zhuhe faces criticism for the city's lack of representation in upcoming Dongning Province's talent training camp. The official expresses disappointment in the president's focus on personal strength rather than finding a suitable representative for the upcoming training camp. The absence of a representative for the past few years has become a source of embarrassment for the city and province. In response, President Xiao Zhuhe defends himself by highlighting the city's lack of established martial art families and resources to support emerging talents. He expresses frustration at the inability to find a martial arts genius within the province, emphasizing the challenges faced in nurturing and retaining promising prospects. Despite his efforts, President Xiao Zhuhe feels helpless in addressing the city's need for a representative in the upcoming training camp. President Xiao Zhuhe exclaimed the secretary as she burst into the room. Xiao Zhuhe looked up, mildly annoyed. What's the rush? Can't you even remember to knock before barging in? He chided gently. The secretary, in her thirties with a gentle demeanor and glasses, appeared flustered. I'm sorry, President. I'll be more careful next time, the secretary apologized sheepishly before shifting to a serious demeanor. I have something important to report, she continued, her tone urgent. Go on, Xiao Zhuhe prompted, his interest piqued. The secretary quickly briefed him on the matter, her words gradually eliciting a change in Xiao Zhuhe's expression. As she mentioned the last detail, his demeanor shifted noticeably. Fetch me the details immediately, Xiao Zhuhe urged, his tone urgent. The secretary hastened to hand over the tablet she held, and Xiao Zhuhe began to scrutinize the information intently. As he read through the contents, his initial calm expression transformed into one of astonishment. Gradually, a sense of immense surprise blossomed across his features. Excellent! Excellent! he exclaimed, his excitement evident. Xiao Zhuhe then turned his attention to the assessment video displayed on the screen. Observing Lu Sheng's demeanor, he couldn't help but be impressed by the young man's composure and confidence. He exudes the aura of a natural leader, Xiao Zhuhe remarked, his eyes shining with admiration. The secretary nodded in agreement. As the video showed Lu Sheng undergoing the blood test, Xiao Zhuhe's anticipation grew. Despite already knowing the outcome from the data, witnessing the blood value of 15.701 on the screen sent a shiver of excitement down his spine. What struck him most was Lu Sheng's youth. At only 17 years old, with just a month into his third year of high school, achieving such a remarkable blood value was unprecedented. 
the impact of this discovery was profound. For comparison, the average vitality value among high school students in Baihe City was a mere fraction of Lu Sheng's. Rising abruptly from his seat, Xiao Juha couldn't contain his excitement. I never imagined Baihe City would produce such a genius, he exclaimed, his expression filled with enthusiasm. After a moment of exhilaration, Xiao Juha's emotions gradually subsided, replaced by a sense of anticipation and intrigue. President, do you think this Lu Sheng took a lot of tonics? The secretary chimed in, breaking the silence. Xiao Juha glanced at her, a hint of amusement flickering in his eyes. Do you realize how many tonics he'd need to reach a blood value of 15.7 at his age? He countered. Even if someone fed him tonics day and night, it wouldn't account for his remarkable abilities. Genius isn't something you can simply buy with money. The secretary nodded in agreement, understanding the implications of Xiao Juha's words. As a sixth-level peak martial artist, he recognized the superficiality of relying solely on tonics to enhance one's abilities. Lu Sheng's strength and vitality were of a different caliber altogether, evident in his solid foundation and combat effectiveness. The sound of Lu Sheng's punch reverberated through the room, each strike resonating with power and precision. More than 15,700, Xiao Juha murmured, his focus unwavering as he scrutinized the video. The perfect realm of boxing technique, he mused, emphasizing each word. The secretary listened intently, captivated by Xiao Juha's analysis. After reviewing the footage multiple times, Xiao Juha's excitement reached a crescendo. Rising from his seat, he exclaimed, It must be so. There's no other explanation. His elation was palpable, surpassing any previous instance. The secretary, taken aback by his fervor, watched in astonishment, President. She began cautiously. But Xiao Juha's laughter drowned out her words. Ha ha, Xiao Xu. Our Baihe Martial Arts Association has truly struck gold this time. As a sixth-level powerhouse, Xiao Juha understood the value of a talented warrior better than most. His years as president had left him feeling stagnant, but now, with the discovery of Lu Sheng, he saw a glimmer of hope for advancement. If, if I can nurture Lu Sheng properly, the rewards he brings may elevate me once more, he contemplated aloud, his mind racing with possibilities. Xiao Juha's motivations were clear. He wasn't driven by a thirst for power but rather by the resources and opportunities it could provide. Arrange a car for me immediately. I want to visit Lu Sheng's family personally and express my gratitude for raising such an exceptional son, he instructed, his tone decisive. Yes, President, the secretary responded, already moving to fulfill his request. Ni Shuang paced anxiously at the entrance of the martial arts hall, her irritation evident in her movements. A young man in a Hongchan martial arts uniform approached, panting. Seeing your sister Ni. Any news? Ni Shuang's eyes sparked with anticipation and urgency as she inquired. The young man nodded, wiping sweat from his forehead. Yes. His name is Lu Sheng, a student at Baihei No. 3 Middle School, in his third year. Good. Ni Shuang's fist clenched with joy, her expression elated. Observing her reaction, the young man grew curious. Seeing your sister Ni, why are you seeking out this Lu Sheng? Did he offend you? There's no need to escalate matters. Shut up. Ni Shuang snapped, cutting him off sharply. She refused to entertain the notion of seeking vengeance on a mere child. The young man fell silent, recognizing Ni Shuang's authority as the daughter of the gym owner and a formidable martial artist in her own right. Suddenly, Ni Shuang's phone rang, breaking the tension. Understood, Ni Shuang replied, her expression shifting to one of complexity. She swiftly regained her composure and strode out of the hall. Take me to Lu Sheng's house and gather some gifts for his family, she instructed, her demeanor resolute. Make sure they're suitable for parents, elders, and a young girl aged 16 or 17. And don't skimp on the expense. With this, the chapter concludes. Don't miss out on the next installment. Hit that subscribe button and join us for the continuation of Lu Sheng's remarkable story.